we're now ready to talk about what we call the slope of a line. Recall that we said that one way to specify a line was to give a point on the line and a direction. The slope of a line is one way of describing the direction that the line goes in. Let me draw some lines that go in different directions. These four lines are all in different directions. They are not parallel. How could we describe the different directions that these lines go in? One way to describe them is in terms of this grid that's behind them. This line, each time it goes one unit to the right, goes up one unit. And it doesn't matter which point we start from. I could start from this point when I go one unit to the right. I need to go up one unit to keep up with the line. One unit to the right, up one unit to keep up with the line. It doesn't matter which point we start from. I could even start from here. One unit to the right, up one unit to keep up with the line. It doesn't matter which point we start from because these are all congruent triangles. So for this line, every time I go right one unit, I have to go up one unit to stay on the line. For this line, if I go right one unit, I have to go up two units to stay on the line. Right one unit, up two units to stay on the line right one unit, up two units to stay on the line. Again, it doesn't matter where I start. I could even start in the middle somewhere. Right one unit, up two units to stay on the line. These are all congruent triangles. Now how do I know that all of the triangles are congruent? Well, because I could pick one of them up and translate it on top of the next one. Now, on this line, when I go right one unit, I don't go upward to stay on the line. I go down to stay on the line. And again, it doesn't matter where I start from. If I go right one unit, I have to go down one unit to stay on the line. And finally, on this line, every time I go right one unit, I have to go down two units to stay on the line. Right one unit, down two units. Right one unit, down two units. Now, by saying what these triangles look like, that's enough to say what direction the line goes in. And that's what we call the slope. For every one unit we move to the right, the slope of a line is how far up one must go in order to keep up with the line. Now, in two of these pictures, we actually had to go downward. If we have to go downward instead of upward, then the slope is a negative number. We think of down as just negative up. So in our examples up here, here the slope is positive 1. Here the slope is positive 2. Here the slope is negative 1. And over here the slope is negative 2. Okay, 
So let's consider a couple of different ways of looking at this. Suppose we met this line and we wanted to find out its slope. Well, in order to figure out the slope, we need to just pick out a point on the line. Let's suppose for a moment that I picked out this point. We go one unit to the right and up some distance. We might ask, how far did we go up? And it's not easy to see. Part of the problem is that I chose a point where my line did not cross a place where two grid lines crossed. Maybe it would be better to choose this point. Go right one unit. And, well, that didn't help much either. It's not easy to see what the slope of this line is. But through the power of similar triangles, we have a way of figuring out the slope. Here's how. So we found this as a point where two grid lines crossed and this line also crossed. Up here, we have another point where two grid lines cross and this line also crosses. We can draw this triangle. This side is three long, this side is two long. In the little triangle, this slide is one long, and this side, we don't know how long it is. But we can find out its length by using algebra. The ratio of this side to this side is the same as the ratio of this side to this side. Um, here we're just dividing by 1. So that little height that we're looking for that I called m is just the number 2 thirds. What is the slope of this line? The slope is 2 thirds. Now in general when we make this calculation we aren't going to reference the similar triangles. We're just going to look for two nice points on the line, see how far we went to the right, see how far we went up. Sometimes we call this distance the rise and this distance the run. And from this we get the formula. Slope equals rise over run. Again, this is a method of calculating the slope, not the definition of the slope. But it's very, very useful. It's so useful that we'll sometimes think of it as the definition. Also note, you can pick any two points that you want for this calculation, and you can pick them because the resulting triangles will always be similar. Whatever two points you pick to make this calculation, the resulting triangle will be similar to the one that goes one to the right and up by the amount of the slope. So this ratio will always be the same. What if we want to go to the left instead of to the right? Why would we want to do that? Well, maybe the point we're interested in is near the right edge of our space, and we don't want to go to the right from there. So here's an example of a line. By looking at a triangle, we see that the slope is one half. What if we wanted to go to the left instead? 
if we think of going to the right by 2 as positive 2, we can think of going to the left by 2 as negative 2. Going up by 1 is positive 1. Going down by 1 is negative 1. In this triangle, we see that the slope is negative 1 over negative 2. Oh, but that's okay. A negative divided by a negative is the same as a positive divided by a positive. If we want to go to the left instead of to the right, we simply think of the run as a negative number. Notice, if we had a negative fraction in this line, for example, if I go 2 to the right, I go down 3, run is positive 2, rise is negative 3, my slope is negative 3 over positive 2, which is negative 3 halves. If I wanted to go to the left instead, well, negative 2 positive 3 positive 3 over negative 2 is also negative 3 halves. Moral of the story, it doesn't matter whether we go to the right or to, or to the left. We can think of the run as a positive number and go to the right, or think of it as a negative number and go to the left.